So you've recently bought an electric car and want a faster charge at home. Well, you're building a house and you want to make sure you set it up now for EV charging further down the track. Well, you've hit the jackpot. Today, we're talking to an EV charger expert. So stay with me. Hi, my name's Greg and welcome to Electric Car Australia, the Aussie YouTube channel that looks at electric vehicles and sustainable living technologies from a more practical perspective. And today we're going to look at Type 2 home charging. So today's video we're going to have a chat with a EV charger expert. So today we've got Aaron Blomfield. Hello, how are you Greg? Good thanks, how are you Aaron? Great mate, great. So Aaron's from Regen EV and um, obviously an electrician who specialises in EV charging. But before we get into that, you've obviously got an EV, so we've got the famous Nissan Leaf here beside us. Correct, yep, that's the work vehicle. Uh, you know, limited range, but it seems to get around and do the job for the time being. And also I have a Tesla X. Fantastic. Tesla X, so there's one um, end of the uh, spectrum to the, to the other. So yeah. very nice car, the Tesla X. But yeah, look, the Alnis and Leafs, they've been the mainstay of EVs, um, probably globally, for, for years. So, yep. One of the pioneers. One yeah. of the pioneers. And would, they would have been around probably as long as maybe Tesla when they hit, hit the market. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, started off with limited battery capacity and whatnot. But, um, uh, net, you know, this was the generation before and now we have a, a newer variety of uh, leaf and it has a bit more uh, capacity than, than this one but yeah. Aaron I mentioned you are an electrician obviously yes. so um, you need to be an electrician to install EV chargers. Correct. I'm assuming any electrician can install a charger but I guess yeah. what you bring to the table is um, you specialise in it yes. and you've got that advice and different options and stuff for people. Yeah it's, it's a bit of a niche market um, it's you know the way I compare it is like putting in an air conditioning unit not every sparky will put in an air conditioning unit because those guys have have concentrated their careers on that and they know how to do it and they can seamlessly do it and do it a lot quicker than say i could do it so um so if i was to get an air con i would probably acquire someone that knows what they're doing uh, and same with ev charging ev charging there's so many different varieties of charges they need to be commissioned via apps and they need you know various other components to make uh, the, the data between um, the, the, the charger and the inverters and the cars uh, need to be set up uh, and also there's other safety requirements uh, around, around the devices as well. Yeah, and I think that's one of the um, things that people ask me most often is, is what are the options, the considerations and stuff. So buying it and having it installed is one thing, but actually part of that research and talking to somebody that knows their stuff, um, that's where the, the real value is. So where do you operate? Obviously, I live in um, Brisbane, so you're Brisbane, Gold Coast? Yeah, Brisbane, Gold Coast, um, and we do have a, a subcontractor on the sunny coast. Um, however, we love EV charging, so if there's something we can do, um, we're happy to you know, facilitate and, and make that process um, accessible or our service accessible to most people. So that, that's good to hear, and I guess I should mention um, uh, Aaron's not paying me for today's video. Um, this is just a totally independent um, video. I ask Aaron a couple of questions on uh, some options for some portable charging, which we'll have a video coming in the next few months about. Um, and he kindly offered to, um, to do a short video and talk about um, EV charging. So look, type two chargers, so for home and commercial sort of applications, I'm assuming you do both. Yep. What is the majority of your inquiries? Is it 50-50, do you get more home ones compared to commercial? Yeah, like home ones is our core business. Um, so we will do between two and three a day um, wow. currently. Um, majority of those will be Tesla owners. Um, and with the uh, with some options of some BYD owners popping through now um, and don't tell me you've got BYD owners that have got cars. Because if you have, I want to I know where they are and who they are. Yeah, the, so uh, funny you say that. I, there's a, um, a guy up the Sunshine Coast which has a second-hand E6, oh, I yes, believe. Yep. Yeah, have you met that, Paul? No, guy? I haven't, but um, I've seen the EV6. Yeah, and there was limited stock of those. That's I think right. it was 15 uh, available at the time, and he purchased one of those. Mm -hmm. 
those that are in the market for the Addo 3, which are coming out, I believe, in a month or two. Or, yep, hopefully. Um, hopefully, yeah, fingers crossed with all that. But um, yeah, they, a lot of those guys are inquiring um, about EV charging and putting some sort of a universal device um, in there as well. And I guess that leads into what I was going to talk about. There's multiple different chargers on the market. Um, could you just quickly go through some of the different features and benefits of yep. them? Um, some are smart, some are dumb. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah, okay. So, um, so a dumb charger, as they like to say in the EV industry, which is, it seems a bit harsh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a plug-in device, which um, will be a plug and play and just do what it's required to do. It doesn't have the capabilities to be able to assess uh, solar um, and adjust itself accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a, um, you could, you know, you, it's set it at a certain ampage and then forget it. Um, you know, unplug it in the morning or, um, you know, do a little bit of charging through the day and then finish the charge. Those solar smart type of devices, um, they will automatically adjust to suit whatever the solar is producing. Um, so it might ramp up in the middle of the day uh, to, uh, you know, to a certain ampage, depending on the size of the uh, solar system, of course. Um, and then as the sunlight starts to um, recede, then I guess the, the charging will slow down and mm -hmm. the ampage to the, to the vehicle will reduce as well. But it's, it's, it, there's no, um, no thinking involved it does what it needs to do and um, and stays within and then you can either set it to surplus only or um, excess uh, solar or just um, you know or just change it to full full charging or maximum charge okay so I guess at the lowest, cheapest end of the market, so we're talking about those dumb chargers, they're very mm -hmm. similar to your, your granny charger where you just yes. plug it in to the power point, you yes. plug it into the socket on the car, turn yes. it on, walk away, yes. and then it just charges at capacity until it's, it's Correct. full. Correct, yes. Um, and if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, um, I'll include a link above to some uh, charging videos that we've, we've done previously. Yeah. And then I guess at the top end of the market, that's like your, and I was going to say Smappy, but it's not that. Mm. What's the other one? The uh, really popular UK brand? Uh, well, actually, no. Uh, Smappy, uh, Smappy is, is the high end. Yeah, okay. it is. Yeah, and, and the Smappy, um, why is it high end? Um, there's a few different reasons. It's It presents well, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, all that aside, the, the aesthetics of it is probably insignificant, really, but it's, it's scalable, so you can add to um, to all circuits and then you can assess everything via via the app so mm -hmm. you can monitor hot water systems and all sorts of different things um, whereas the so other it's more smart home type stuff correct. really integrated with, yes okay absolutely so you're just combining the ev charging alongside of the whole home to assess everything and try mm -hmm. and stay within the parameters of solar yeah um, yeah well that one sounds way too fancy for me yes. but there was another one that's really popular and the name just escapes me zappy zappy that's yeah. that's the one very similar name. <laughs> yeah, exactly um so that one's quite quite popular it's i believe very popular the first generation there was a bit of some problems with reliability etc yes. but in the second generation ones now the zappy twos that's all been ironed out well there is still minor issues mm -hmm. um and maybe you won't see it it might not um it might not be as visible but um, there is um, a lot of these devices are made in the cooler climates of UK yeah that's right and they come to a, you know a climate like uh, Queensland in the middle of summer um, and they struggle they struggle yeah. they do struggle yeah, um, yeah. you know it's I think they max out at 46 degrees or something yeah. and then when they get to that point they start to taper off in their charging um, uh, ampage whereas the smappy um, I think maxes out at 65 degrees yeah so okay. Yeah. So, so just on that point, so when you say it, it, it maxes down, it's not just going to necessarily switch off, it'll just ramp down. Ramp straight down. So I, I think it reduces, uh, like it can, uh, in the middle of Queensland summer or whatever, you can, you can pretty well max out at like uh, 46 degrees within the first hour. Wow. And okay. then it will just dramatically reduce. Yeah. Um, so they're the sorts of considerations, I guess, that um, speaking to someone like Aaron can can help talk you through. And depending on where you live in Australia, or the even the positioning of where you're going to position your charger on your building. So 
We've touched on a little bit there, wear and tear. Are these charges pretty much maintenance free or do you need to <laughs> keep a bit of an eye on them when you put the plugs in and out? Do yeah, they, wear out? they do, they do. And um, the tethered leads, they're, you know, they're still just a lead and they're, they're still hardwired in. So that wear and tear and moving around and whatnot can loosen terminals. Um, so there's, I have come to, uh, you know, gone out to properties where they've had problems with the whole device tripping out and mm -hmm. we found that the, the the sockets and whatnot were all becoming loose and um, so there is a little bit of maintenance there I still think you got to treat it treat it like an appliance you still got to mm -hmm. treat it quite um, quite nicely you know you may lose circuit breakers or RCDs or um, you know whatever the safety device is that's associated um, so yeah so I think we'll see that more prevalent down the down the track because this is kind of new to us right so yeah and um, of course when you see charges in a commercial application I was recently out at um, Springfield Lakes at the shopping center there they kindly provide um, the leads so there's some untethered charges there so the leads are separate and believe me when I looked at those leads they've had a pretty hard life mm. so if you're using them at home and looking after them they'll probably last forever nearly whereas yeah. if they're in a commercial application absolutely um, they, they do get a harder harder life What's the go with availability of chargers? If somebody came to you today and said, I want that particular charger, yep. is there a problem with certain brands or is everything pretty much I think okay? now it's getting better. Um, so I think, I think we're staying in line with home chargers. So as the uptake is more prevalent, then chargers seem to be more available. Um, in the early days, um, I think Tesla struggled to keep up with supply um, and then we were seeing delays. Uh, in terms of the smarter devices, there seems to be a lot more available now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and more options. And I mentioned at the start of the video a particular portable charger I'm looking at. It's a Fronius Watt Pilot charger, um, and that's not looking like it's coming until towards the end of the year. Um, but that is a, a new, sort of unique type product, so things are coming all the time. So let's talk pricing. Yes. So this is one of the key things that everyone will want to um, yeah. be interested in. So let's go from sort of the low end. Yep. Um, so maybe supply the charger and, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about install shortly because yep. I know it's, it's nearly impossible to say what an install price is going to be because it's a case by case. But yes. if we were going to provide a bare bones basic uh, charger up to sort of that full blown smappy type stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so I think a, a good option um, right now is a Gen 3 uh, Tesla wall connector and that is compatible with all EVs. Mm -hmm. um, and at 750, I think they've even reduced it, it was like 780, um, so they reduced that to 750. It's simple, um, but it does the job. Um, it maxes out 11 kilowatts, uh, so we're not getting 22 kilowatts out of it. Um, however, for the money, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty good buy. Um, so that being at the well, actually, you could probably even go maybe a step lower. You can probably get some, you know, eBay specials, and you can probably get ones that maybe I'm not really. Um, not, I wouldn't say I'm not interested in, but um, uh, a bit shy to go near because we don't really, they're not tried and true, if you, yeah. if you know yeah. what I mean. And maybe then the certifications around that might be a bit iffy. Um, so let's just start it at, say, the, the Tesla at 750 and you work your way up. Uh, in the home environment, um, as we were talking about, the Smappy is probably the higher end, mm -hmm. uh, but there is there is talk of uh, some other products that are hitting the market as well in that sort of $1,500 mark mm -hmm. uh, in line with the Zappies. Um, so they're your smart charges? So smart you charges. That's what you're paying extra yeah, for? Correct. Yeah, correct. You're bouncing up. But you've, you've, in between all that, you've got some other universals which are you know just plug and plays as well uh, in the ocular. So it's really, it depends on what you're looking for, what you need the charger to do. Correct. Um, but, but there's options out there. So Absolutely. Just to go back to that Tesla one, so that's a Gen 3? Gen 3, yep. It can charge any EV with a Type 2 connector? Any EV, yes. Yeah. And that charges 
for want of a better word, a dumb charger, like it doesn't have the smarts? Yeah, look, it is smart, um, but it's, it, it's, a, it's a different type of smart. It's uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, it has, um, it's automated so that Tesla can log into it and see if there's any faults. Yeah. Uh, there is some share, load share uh, available with it as well. Um, so they can lo um, load balance with it. Mm -hmm. When I say it's not smart, it doesn't have the solar smarts, so it has other type of smarts. Yeah. But, but in terms of um, just using it as a basic type um, charge uh, EVSC, then it, it works really well. Yeah, and that's that's a good price. But yeah, I guess it is one of those things that, as most of our viewers will know, Teslas have a lot of those smarts built into the actual ecosystem of the vehicle. Um, so a lot of that uh, start stop. Uh, control it with your app is actually built into the, the Tesla vehicle. Um, so the Tesla charger will obviously interact better with a Tesla vehicle, um, but as far as a universal charger, it's good to know at that price point that it can charge any yeah, EV. Correct. There's another uh, uh, item that's hit the market as well. And I, if you're in the solar game, you may have heard of ZJ Benny. Um, ZJ Benny have isolators mm -hmm. and whatnot, and they've been in the solar game for quite some time. Um, well, they they have a a universal charger that's hit the market as well and it has uh, capabilities of uh, load balance so it can assess you know what the property is doing and stay within the parameters so you don't overburden the supply um, and it can assess uh, the solar um, generation as well as the grid um, yeah. and it can um, it can uh, self manage it itself as well to be able to utilize solar um, and that's a quite competitive price as well yeah it's probably a bit much for this video so we might get you okay. back and we'll do another okay. video but there's some really interesting stuff going on in that commercial space around load and grid balancing where you've got multiple charges so you might have six or eight charges in a high-rise building car park and um, the network or the system needs to be able to balance across charges. Um, so yeah, we might have a look at that yeah, at another day. Absolutely. So look, to wrap up on the actual charges themselves or the products, what would be your top three charges that you'd recommend or the most common ones that, that you sell? Yeah, um, so I mean, definitely with the volume of sales with Tesla, the Tesla wall connector by yep. far, yep. Um, the socket, uh, is another great alternative to the Tesla wall connector mm -hmm. because a three-phase socket um, with a portable charger can charge any uh, vehicle um, and you know still limited to what the vehicle can charge at of course yep um, but a three-phase socket is definitely a, a cost-effective install mm -hmm. so I'll probably sell um, you know Gen 3's sockets and then it would probably go up to um, uh, probably ocular I would uh, I would install a lot of oculars mm -hmm. and then uh, snappy um, yeah yeah okay. so that's interesting on the three-phase socket so I hadn't thought too much about that so why would people put those in does that give the flexibility that they've got portable chargers correct that can around? Yeah, yeah that's the thing so if we are limited and and we are limited in Australia with DC fast chargers um, and uh, even destination chargers so if we're traveling out and about and we want to go out west and all these other places that we like to venture as Australians um, having a portable charger that can sit here um, and still give you the capabilities of quick charging um, you can travel around and use those three phase sockets in those other locations to get the same speeds as well yeah that's good to hear and just to keep you guys on the hook uh, watching today that is something that I'm uh, looking at so up until now we haven't needed a um a faster charger but we are looking at one of those portable chargers which does something similar so um, if you like the channel or you like the video please click that like button subscribe to the channel um, we'll probably be three to six months away uh, from bringing that video out so um, so let's talk installs so uh, as we know or as we've talked about you do supply and install correct if I come along to you and you go I've got an EV charger from somewhere. Yep. Will you install it for me? Absolutely. Yes, that's that's what we are. We're, we're basically an infrastructure company, so we will install whatever devices um, has been uh, acquired or we can acquire it for you uh, mm -hmm. either way. Um, our main focus is to, to make the install happen for you and do it safely. So that leads into another part because um, even personally myself, I've looked online, there's a lot of charges available online, yep. um, some from local providers like EVSE and EV Revolution, which we've um, talked to and featured before in our videos. 
obviously you've got your overseas mass market eBay um, type stuff as well. Yeah. What are some of the considerations that people should keep in mind with that? Mm. Is it a good idea? Is it possible? You know, because we're talking about Australian standards, safety Correct. standards, you know, electrical's not stuff you want to play around with. No, that's right. Yeah, I, look, I'd be reluctant to to go with anything that is kind of not certified um, on the, however, I would probably consider some European um, varieties because the European CE approvals or whatever have quite high standards and, you know, we do recognise those. Yeah. Um, however, uh, even in saying that, maybe it's worth considering having that conversation to see if that particular device, uh, device has been used here or it's um, or they're investigating some sort of uh, approvals but it is still better to obviously ha obtain something that has been approved to Australian standards. Yeah I guess that's just something to consider that if, if you are looking online for some of those um, charges you can potentially save a little bit of money but um, I would definitely recommend as Aaron's just mentioned you know look for some that definitely have those UK, European type certifications as a, as a starting point and maybe reach out to someone like Aaron before you spend the money and say hey look I'm thinking about uh, this charger as an option um, and discuss it a little bit before you actually uh, buy it yeah. um, because it does have wider implications with things like house insurance, car insurance and all that sort of stuff so as far as car brands go so I know some of the um, brands have their own association with chargers and charger installs and that sort of stuff. Correct, yeah. Um, any comment you've got on that? Well, you know, Regen EV have, you know, we've worked with Por uh, Porsche, we've installed the Porsche chargers, the Mercedes chargers, um, uh, a few of the other brands as well. Um, and, you know, we're happy to install uh, any of those and we have installed them um, so they all have oh we've done a BMW as well mm -hmm. they've all just got different settings um, so you just you just need to understand uh, how to make those settings work because as I say they're all different and if you acquire it and then an electrician needs to install it it does become a little bit tricky um, mm -hmm. so the last thing you want is for your electrician to be charging an hourly rate and sitting there reading a manual for half a day. Yeah, so. you as the guinea pig doing <laughs> yeah. it now. Yeah. Um, but in, in general, those branded chargers, so uh, the salesman at the dealership might try and sell you a branded charger, mm. um, but there's no commitment. You don't have to have that, do you? Like no. If it's a Type 2 standard. Correct. Any charger can work work on the car. Absolutely. And a lot of those uh, branded chargers are branded. That's the, the difference. Um, they don't really offer anything uh, unique um, other than the... The sticker on the... The sticker on the front. Um, and some of them are presented massively as huge, but they're just a basic charger inside. So, you know, where you might actually paying top dollar and you you might acquire something that has a lot more smarts for the same price. Mm. So uh, just, yeah, just need to keep that in mind as well. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I always mention, that the charger is not actually the charger. The charger is in the vehicle, um, so it's an onboard charger in mm. the vehicle. What we're talking about today is actually an EVSE, correct, yeah. which is an electric vehicle supply S equipment. Yes, that's glad right. I'm, glad yeah, I'm glad. That one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so really what that is, it's a box of smarts that communicates uh, with the car. And, and allows the energy to go into the car. Correct. Is that yeah, that's that's exactly right. Sort yeah, of got that right. I think we, we end up just calling them chargers because that's just what we do. It's and easier. We're used to skateboards, and then you buy an uh, electric skateboard with a charger, right? Yeah. So it just it's just evolved that way. But yes, you're 100% correct in that. So when you're thinking about an install, so we've got um, some viewers that they've either got an EV or they're thinking of getting an EV. What are some of the main considerations they should think about? And maybe we split it up into a new build. So if you're building a new house, mm -hmm. what are some of the considerations? Yep. Or if you've got an existing um, building, house, commercial property, what are the main considerations people should maybe think through before they give you a call? Absolutely, yeah. If you were building now, I'd advise that maybe three phases uh, is something that you, you, you would consider because it's not that 
you know, you, you might be thinking of an e EV now and you might not do the Ks and whatnot, but um, the future may present itself that you might end up with two EVs mm. or you might end up doing a lot more traveling because you love the EV mm. so much. So, so it's, um, you've, you've got to remember that what you're supplying to the vehicle is probably the, the most um, exhaustful appliance in the whole house yeah. now. It's going to suck the most energy. Correct. Yeah, so yeah. we need to uh, ensure that we have the capabilities to be able to stay, sustain with that. Um, yeah. So three phases, definitely uh, um, the way to go for a new build. Uh, it doesn't limit you if you have single phase. Single phase you can still have um, options um, and then so in Queensland we're limited to 20 amps um, that we can automatically put um, onto the house without uh, seeking approval. Mm -hmm. If we're going into 32 amps and whatnot, then Energex uh, would like uh, the, the option to be able to control that load. Mm -hmm. um, so then there's approvals associated with single phase and 32 amps. Um, but 20 amps is sufficient in most cases anyway. Yep. Um, you can get pretty good ranges out of 20 amps. Yep. Um, so most people would think, well, I need maximum. Um, so maximum is 32 amps single phase and you might get 50 Ks added range mm -hmm. every hour. Um, well, 20 amps is, is, is a fraction less in the yeah, case, yeah. so it's not going to break the balance. But it's a good point, isn't it? Because um, then this is not going to happen tomorrow, but over time, we're going to have teenage kids that are going to have the secondhand cheap little EV runabout, yep. and notoriously, the teenagers are going to, or slightly older than teenagers, but they're going to want to charge exactly the same time that mum and dad are charging Correct. up because they're off to the coast the next day. Absolutely. Um, so, by future proofing, mm. um, that is going to uh, alleviate that. Absolutely. And what if you've got an older building? So, um, yep. obviously the considerations there will be the age of your switchboard, cabling, mm. that sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And some of those, um, th we're still seeing older switchboards with fuses and whatnot in there. So, it's, uh, it's unbelievable what you see. <laughs> I had one of those not too long ago. We got the um, grid solo uh, put in and we had to get the whole, a big component of the, of the cost was to um, put a new switchboard in and all new I was reluctant to say that just in case Greg did have the old fuses. Hey, this was 1970 cows. Yeah, that's so. right. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it is vital to, and, and anytime we alter any switchboards, we have to upgrade all circuits to RCDs. Yes, that was one thing I learned that the moment electric comes they can't do anything yeah. unless they upgrade it to the current standards. Correct so. yeah um, so and then bearing that in mind then the electrician needs to assess what size mains is uh, is entering the property um, and then work out their maximum demands on the property to ensure that whatever device they install uh, doesn't overburden the whole property. Yeah so another consideration this is more of a question for me out of interest I guess is who determines where the switchboard goes on a new property? Because logic would tell me that you would want your switchboard as close to the charger or vice versa as possible. So yep. if you're building a new house and whoever decides that, decides mm. to put the switchboard on the total opposite house to the garage. Yes, that's right. Or the driveway. Yep. That's going to cost you a fair bit more money, Absolutely, isn't it, yes, that's correct. Um, so a lot of the new builds providing the builder has thought this through um, a subboard in the garage is mm. is definitely um, is it, it should be a no-brainer that they yeah. just put those subboards in there and that way it's an easy um, it's an easy transition to be able to put a, an EVC in the garage alongside of the subboard so you can um, do an add-on later correct easier, yeah. yeah or any other appliance um, that needs to be uh, added to the circuitry um, so yeah, we do see those switchboards that are on the opposite side of a two-storey house and then there is conduit and um, other bits and pieces which you have to add to a beautiful looking uh, property, unfortunately. Yeah. So it could be Murphy's Law, so if you are thinking of building or building soon, maybe mention that to your, to your builder that you're thinking of um, an EV and you would like uh, it positioned as close as you can to the driveway or the, the garage, or at least, as Aaron mentioned, have that uh, decent sized subboard in your garage. So what's the thing that impacts on the price of an install the most? So we've talked a bit about distance from switchboard, cabling, three phase, single phase. Is there one particular thing that 
you would recommend people really watch out for because it can drive the price right up? Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, so we have four levels of pricing. Um, so we have a basic back-to-back, -back, which is what we talked about with the switchboard being you know alongside of it or on the opposite side of that wall mm -hmm. um, that's just a standard back to back we're in and out we commission the device and it's very cost effective um, and then we have an up and over uh, which is where the switchboard is on this side uh, of the garage but then you want the EVC on the other side okay. of the garage yep. so you jump in Excellent. the ceiling um, you need an additional person and uh, then you need some additional cable obviously to get it over that side mm -hmm. so that's level uh, two and then um, and then level three will be a house that requires some sort of conduit to run down the side uh, to get to where it needs to be and then the last one is the tricky one and that's the two-story that we've <laughs> spoken about and they vary because then yeah. there's massive two-story homes, Sovereign Island and, and other places like that, for example, um, to just your suburban two-story home, which require um, up with conduit, cross the top down into that garage somehow, and then around in bends and into the into the location. That's really tricky one. Very tricky, and no manhole. No, well, only the manholes like in that top section of the yeah. roof. Other than that, you could be you know, pulling up tin or kicking tiles or just getting conduit around somewhere. So, mm. but we always make it happen, but yep. it might take a full day. Yeah, it costs a bit more. And for our overseas viewers or our viewers in Australia that may not know where Sovereign Island is, it's on the Gold Coast, um, waterfront sort of properties, yep. fairly exclusive. Um, so the homeowners down there, they don't want ugly conduits down the sides of walls or any of that sort of Correct. stuff. Very nice homes. Yes. So obviously the, the extra hours that go into to that's that. right um, so basically we could say if it's back to back with a switchboard that's that's your basic most cheapest and yep. then if we're going up and over is it double no roughly? not double no, no it's uh, still under that yeah so it might be a couple of hundred dollars more and that will allow for the additional cable mm -hmm. and and uh, extra person uh, yeah an extra person to spotter. pull that cable down yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so we talked about uh, some potential delays or short delays with product what about installs so how busy are you you guys and your colleagues in the industry like if if I've got a charger or got an EV and I want a charger if I ring you up and say right this is the charger I want is it a week two weeks three weeks for you to get order the charger in and then book a time it's it's becoming like the start of the year there was a bit of a drought with EVs um, so uh, like last year was quite consistent we were doing two to three uh, installs a week there mm -hmm. um, and then the start of the year dried up um, Tesla weren't bringing out models and we just couldn't get our hands on in, on anything um, but then uh, halfway through kind of this year well, in the last you know two or three months, it's just peak. It's, it almost yeah. feels like it's peaking, or it could. Well, we're probably not even anywhere near peaking, but um, but it's definitely moving up, um, and the install process is is kicking out. So it's you know I'm probably three weeks uh, out now, um, with the odd gap here or there, mm -hmm. which seems to just fill up pretty quick. But yep. um, so and then we have sizable projects entering the end of the year so i think by the end of the year um, we're going to be inundated yeah i think also once those uh, few newer models start to come into the market you know as, as we know there's a lot of ev models we're waiting on once they actually hit the market and they start uh, flowing through dealerships etc um, i think the inquiry rate it's um, going to go, will, go through go, the roof go through the roof yeah, yeah. if we we're just looking at well let's go back to price again so for a basic charger so let's say we're going to do one of those Tesla uh, Gen 3 chargers yep. and we had a back-to-back -back install yep. um, no sort of complications bog standard yep. what sort of price are we starting at for S supply and install? So single phase you'd be looking at 450 plus mm -hmm. GST um, and then an up and over which is the second level uh, would be 650 plus GST and then three phase uh, is a different uh, install again because the uh, the RCBO or the safety switch as we, we call it um, is considerably more expensive um, so that price creeps up a little bit more um, and then obviously the additional cable mm -hmm. um, and the additional 
um, connections that go into that. So there's more time involved with three phase, um, so, but we normally allow another 100 bucks on top of that. Yeah, and just on that three phase, is every, so I know I could get three phase, it, it's got to come across from a pole across the street, mm. um, but I'm in an older, more developed suburb. In the yes. newer suburbs, does three phase go past every house? Can it, every house get three phase? It, most homes do, um, so they're, they're accessible through the little green pillar that's outside the front uh, of the property um, and, and that's so for underground correct in, in all the new estates yes. in Australia now are, are underground underground um, and then as you say with the older um, more established areas they have uh, overheads um, and then there is guys that specialize in bringing in um, the additional phases um, because they've got certain uh, licenses to be able to do that sort of yeah. type of work. So to cover off some of our viewers that won't be able to install a charger at their location, they either live in a high-rise building or they, they live in a unit complex, so they uh, may not even have their own car park. Mm. Have you got any tips of where those people could go to talk to somebody that could help them out? So whether mm. it was their body corporate, uh, manager, whether it's council to try and lobby to get some charges on the street. Uh, yes. We've seen in the UK, um, around London now particularly, there's a lot of charges going into lampposts, which yes. if you've got the capacity um, of electricity, that sounds a logical step. Yep. Have you got any tips or uh, do yeah. you get many of those sorts of inquiries? I think what we need to see is obviously DC fast chargers should be for traveling and they should be kept that way. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, those, those unfortunate that you were talking about that don't have the availability of having a home charger. Um, so what's happening is we're seeing those type of people clogging up the DC fast chargers. And so it's all a little bit Messy. Uh, messy at yeah. the moment so what I'd like to or what we should all be seeing is that those free devices that are to entice you to go to a cafe or a coffee shop and they put an EV charger in there they should be billable so you, sh you should be able to pay by credit card yeah. to use those facilities and that will keep those ones that think that they can just get free charging charging at home and not using those ones and then those people that are in units that um, have to face body corporates or go through all the rigmarole yeah. to get past that um, those those requirements then those guys can go to those restaurants and cafes and pay for their charging and they'd be more than happy to do it that's right because the availability is, is correct there. yeah um, but i do encourage people if, if you do live in a, a unit block uh, or, or something similar and you don't have any charging, talk to your body corporate or your strata managers um, because these are the types of um, infrastructure that they, they are starting to put in um, because it is a, a beneficial uh, for everyone in the complex. Um, but obviously as we transition to EVs, it's going to become a necessity. Absolutely. We are doing um, currently a high-rise building uh, in Runaway Bay with a hundred parking bays um, and we are putting the infrastructure in there to support each one of those parking spots um, which is quite rare so yeah we yep. should probably um, touch on that a bit more because it's actually something that um, like you say the hurdles to get to that point is, is it's a year in the making this particular project is crazy. <laughs> I, I can imagine and and so like we mentioned we will do a separate video on that that, that looks at, at those bigger sort of more complex installs. Mm. Okay so to wrap it up what's your most common question so um, what do you see people continuously ask and sometimes it's it's something that's out of left field hence why I'm asking it here because there's things that as EV owners and regular users of EVs sometimes we don't think that people don't know about so is there something that's it's it's always k's how many k's will i get on a charge you know um why i want 70 k's per hour or something and it's it's um we all we all think that faster is better but the thing is if we're trying what we're trying to achieve is to either utilize our solar yeah um so so the education i put out there's two forms of education and one is that we don't always require the fastest charging and getting 70 k's an hour if we're sleeping at night we have good 10 or 8 hours to 10 hours so we have all that uh, available time to charge so whether it's done in three hours or four hours or eight hours it doesn't really matter that's right um, and then through the day it's it's solar charging so then we need to reduce the rate to stay in line with that anyway um, so 
So when, when you talk about that, we don't want to be sucking from the grid, do we? Correct. You, you and just want to use the maximum amount of your spare absolutely, solar. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So and when you start pulling from th uh, 32 amps and you're starting to utilise grid uh, supply anyway, so you're sort of defeating the purpose. Well, they're, they're the conversations I have quite regularly. Uh, and the other, yeah. is it worth spending the extra on all the fancy devices and whatnot? Um, and it's horses for courses. Mm. There's people out there that really like the tech and they really want things to work the way they should, should operate. Um, so then those conversations always revolve around, do I spend the extra or do I just go with the simple charger? And that's the good thing about talking to somebody that's, that's in the game, um, because I'm more the other way. I probably, less is more for me, yep. keep it a bit simpler. I don't yep. want to, if the internet goes down, I still want to be able to charge, etc. Um, whereas, as we know, there's people totally the other way. They want to be at the forefront of the tech, the yeah. latest gadgets. Correct. They want to be able to control the car and the whole home yeah. from you know, overseas, for instance. Absolutely, so. yeah, that's right. Automotive, um, everything uh, controllable via your phone or, and whatnot, yep. um, and that's fine. So, and I guess that that's th they're the conversation I have quite regularly. Well, that's it, Aaron. Thanks very much for taking no the worries. time. Thank really you. appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone's got some information out of that and, and learnt some new things. I know I definitely uh, have. As we mentioned, we'll um, get Aaron back at some point in the future and we'll talk a little bit more about the commercial space and um, unit complexes, shopping centre installs and some of the interesting stuff that's going on in that space. As we mentioned, this is totally independent. Um, Aaron hasn't paid me anything. As we mentioned, we're just here to help educate people and, and bring them up to speed on all the exciting stuff that's going on in the EV world, and particularly today, the EV charging space. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like, the thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel to be alerted of all the new videos we've got coming up in the next few months. If you'd like to drop us a few dollars, I'll include the Patreon link below and also the PayPal link. Well, that's it. Look after yourselves, family and friends. Stay safe and we'll talk soon. Cheers. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Hopefully, awesome. that, that's hopefully that goes okay. Uh,